Hello everybody, welcome back to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. My name is Todd, Sassy, the Kitchen Queen. Hey! Over here, she's getting ready to can some homegrown chilies and jalapenos over here. And uh, they're looking really good, so we'll try to add a little B-roll footage in there for you a little later on. Okay, so today we have a, another special treat for you. It's about a five and a half pound USDA Choice Beef Rib Roast, and it's a uh, bone-in. Um, and it's a nice little piece of meat we got it at the local grocer. Uh, it's not prime, but it, it's just as good for a backyard cook for a, a Sunday night dinner, Sunday night feast that we're going to have here. Um, we fired up the yoder outside, so while it's getting warm, we're going to go ahead and uh, season this uh, lovely piece of meat up. I actually got this for a song and dance. I was wandering around the meat department, as I usually do, even if I'm not there to buy anything. And uh, I saw this at nearly half price. So I grabbed it and put it in the freezer. And when we got back from our trip, uh, we thought this, we uh, took this out right away to thaw it out. But it's a really lovely piece of meat. Give me a little bit of sh shot of that there. One of the Labor Day weekend sales. Try to, Looks good, babe. Try to get it to focus on there. We're going to smoke it up really nicely on our Yoder Wichita loaded. I'm going to be using some uh, some hickory and some oak, and uh, I'm going to be uh, smoking it just kind of like that, bone up, and I'm going to get an internal temperature about 120, and then I'm going to put it over there on that cowboy grill, which is the firebox grate, and sear it over direct flames. So it's going to come out really good, so be sure to stay tuned and watch us to the end. So the first thing uh, I'm going to do, put a little bit of a smear on here, just a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of avocado oil, and uh, it's about all it needs. And uh, I'm not trimming anything on this. Okay, so now that I'm done putting that uh, smear on there, I'm going to uh, wipe my hand here a little bit. And I'm going to give a nice little generous coating of kosher salt. Why kosher salt, that you might ask? Kosher salt tends to be a much coarser cut and uh, has a nicer texture, uh, sticks around longer, and uh, you'd be surprised. Get yourself some kosher salt. Trust me on this one. Next, uh, I'm going to take some coarse ground black pepper. Now since this is a pretty big piece of meat, you don't have to worry about putting too much salt and pepper on this. It's going to go on the smoker for at least two and a half, three hours. Sorry that I'm making a little bit of a mess. I think Sassy's going to be mad at me. All right, there we go. So like magic, kitchen's nice and clean. Got a beautiful piece of uh, ribeye here. Magic, huh? Just like magic. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is put a tray with uh, a water solution. Probably Sassy wants me to use some broth. So I'm going to put some broth in the bottom of a pan. I'm going to put that underneath the grate. Then I'm going to put this, this bone-in rib roast, bone up, and any drippings in the two and a half to three hours it'll go into that pan there help to make an, a nice tasty au jus a little bit later on and uh, we'll see how that goes of course we're going to do 120 internal temperature and then we're going to direct sear that over some uh some wood coals all right how's it going baby deadheading my basil i'll just leave it in the planter the bees can have it but um, I was going to cut some rosemary and um, thyme for your uh, um, butter butter glaze, butter sauce for, okay. after you, for after your cook. Yeah, when we uh, sear it, we'll just go with some of that, uh, that uh, butter bath. Mm-hmm. All right, what you got there? This right here is thyme. Thyme? We don't need too much. I like the rosemary, though. Yep. Okay. Big old piece of rosemary here. Mm. Smell it. Sm smell. 
Mm, smells really fragrant. Oh, yeah, it smells great. I can smell it from here. Get some more of this. Now, for you guys that may not know, our hometown has a lot of snails. And so what Sassy did here is she put a little bit of copper tape around some of these little in-ground planters. Snails don't like crawling along copper. I think it's pretty smart, babe. Completely untouched by snail slugs, everything. I poked holes in the bottom of the plastics to put the plant through. So it's actually in the ground. Uh huh. So. Awesome. I can see some of those jalapenos. Those are serranos. Serranos. And okay. the ones behind are jalapenos, but I just picked it, picked both of these bushes clean, except for a few. Uh, Serranos that aren't quite ready. And this is a chocolate habanero. These aren't quite ready yet. See how beautiful they are? So big. Yeah. And right. of course my basil. Cool. You, you want more, more um, rosemary? I think that'll do it. Okay. All right. Looks like we're uh, just about 250 on both ends of this uh, yoder. Which is pretty rare. I usually see about 25 to 50 degree difference. So, not sure what it is. Maybe it's just uh, my dumb luck. But uh, so we're gonna get we're gonna get this roast on there now. I'm gonna put the meaty end toward the fire and put it right above that drip pan that I put down here. Right below it, I got the drip pan. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go with that about 250 plus or minus 25. You know, you're, you're barbecuing, you're smoking. Uh, you know, with this, these stick burners, these offset smokers, when you go for about 250, you know, really you're anywhere from 275 to 225. Uh, you know, don't worry about that. You know, it's, it's backyard cooking and uh, it's, it's still going to work out just fine. So uh, we're going to watch that internal temperature. Um, I'm looking at two and a half to three hours. When it's reached 120, then we're going to sear it. So we'd love to hear about what you guys do while you're waiting for your meat to cook on those smokers. It takes a long time, so it gives you a chance to do all kinds of things from cleaning your house, cleaning your garage, to do what we love to do, and that's test run our Vespas. <laughs> So be sure to hit us up in the description. We'd like to hear what you guys do while you're waiting for your meat to smoke. Since so about 4 o'clock, and it's uh, 5.45 right now, so we're an hour and 45 minutes into the cook. My, uh, I just put some new wood on there, so the ambient at the meat is about 300 degrees. Um, the inside is about 88 I put it on there kind of cool, uh, so that's 88. It's coming up a little bit slowly, probably uh, 10 degrees about every 10 or 15 minutes, and just went up. I'm targeting 120, and that's when I'm going to take it off and sear it. So I haven't looked at it yet, really, and I haven't uh, spritzed it or anything. There we go. Seems to have some decent color. That drip pan's doing well. Close it down because if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So we're by the firebox. Tell true saying right about 300. And by the exhaust, about 225. I tend to see a variation between them two. And uh, that's pretty typical. But that meter app, that's going to tell you the truth right there. At the meat. Of course, I just opened it up. It cooled off really quick there, but... Uh, 285 now it's climbing back up so that's uh that's what i'm looking at so we'll get back to you in a bit so this isn't really a uh, video about uh, fire management i went ahead and threw on a piece of oak and hickory on there um the coals look like they were just about ready to go and uh, i wanted to keep those high temperatures here to finish this stuff off so i threw them on there looks like the fire is going pretty well right now I've only got the door cracked. That's what these Yoder Wichita's really like. They just want them cracked. I think my next cook, I'm gonna get rid of that fire grate and just go on the bottom of the uh, fire chamber altogether. So I'm gonna close this, close this down. Those should turn into nice coals. 
and I should see temperatures remain in the 300 range. I was originally going to go for 250, but uh, it's getting late, and uh, it's a rib roast, so I could take it. Okay, looks like my meter app is telling me uh, it's about four minutes from being ready. Again, I was going for 120, but I've uh, I've stopped prime ribs at 118, 117, let it coast up. I'm gonna take this off, put it in a pan, and, and foil the top of it while I get the firebox ready with some fresh wood, and I'm gonna sear it over open wood. Got some nice color, don't it? I'm gonna protect this just for a moment. Now that's not much, but I don't want to cool it down too quick. Okay. I already put a couple logs on there, so kind of spread those around a little bit. Make a nice little surface. Okay, so we took this off at 120 degrees internal temperature and we've been letting it sit for about 15 minutes. Uh, these rib roasts are going to continue to coast up, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a temperature go. Now, probably right around 127 or so, I'm going to want to cut it open. Oh man, this is delicious. Okay. Hmm. Got 127 there. Okay, so it's reading about 127 and 130 in two different places. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing cut up. So one more look at it. It's got some beautiful color from that hickory and oak combination. Of course, Sassy's butter bath with fresh garlic and rosemary from the garden. And fine. And time. Now these drippings, just more for the au jus. Put it in there, baby. It's okay. There's a little greenery in there. Let me take a picture of this beautiful beast. Whew. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it right along the bone and just kind of separate it from that bone a little bit. Definitely medium rare. And this is a choice piece. Well, it doesn't have the most marbling in the world, but uh, all right. That's too raw for me. And it's a little rare. I think we can. Uh, some people like it rare like that. 
again, just kind of you just kind of cook it to your liking. Sassy likes it a little bit more well done. You can definitely uh, put some of this in the oven. For health reasons, I can't have raw meat. All right. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's excellent. Okay. Cut the end open there. You can see it's uh, the end pieces are a little more well done. And those are the pieces we're going to cut off for sassy. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, be sure to uh, comment down below and follow our links to our Amazon store. We are an Amazon affiliate. Many of the products that we use in this, these videos and others are available through our Amazon store. There's not going to be an additional charge for you to use that link. It's just going to help support the page. Occasionally, I will have sales on some of those things, so check it out. Because I shop there like all the time. Yeah, she's an Amazon <laughs> shopper. For you that uh, like more of a medium, uh, medium rare, uh, start about 130, 135. Uh, I stopped at about 127. Uh, for health reasons, Sassy needs to eat something a little bit more uh, well done, so uh, we cut off some pieces at the end and uh, some of the more medium rare stuffs in the middle. But when you cook it that way, you could always go back and pan fry it, put it in the oven, and cook it again. And, exactly. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so that's not a problem. Yeah, it looks so, great. Looks great. So, again, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Bye.